everybody. Welcome to Carlene's Kitchen. Today we're going to be making Linzer cookies, which are a takeoff from the Linzer tort, a traditionally made in Linz, Austria. And this is a very, very traditional recipe. Uh, so let's get started. I hope you enjoy it. Linzer cookies are a filled cookie. They're made in two parts and with raspberry jam in the middle. And so to make the cookie dough, we're going to start out with a cup of butter and two thirds cup of sugar. And we're going to beat that together until it's smooth. And this takes a minute or two, a couple of minutes, you want it to be nice and smooth to give the cookie a good consistency. And then once this is smooth, the um, dry ingredients are flour, um, baking powder, cinnamon, and an egg. And then we're going to also add um, almond extract and vanilla and ground almonds. And one of the, one of the tips with the almonds is you do want to make sure you're using ground almonds, not almond flour. So if you can either buy ground almonds or you can take whole almonds that are roasted and put them in your food processor and grind them. But you want them to look kind of like a fine brine like this. You don't want flour. So let's see how our creamed butter and sugar is going. I want it to be a little more consistent and softer than this. So those of you that bake know that you always have to scrape down your bowl to get everything really nice and homogeneous. So let's give that a little bit longer in the bowl. And then we're going to add an egg. add my uh, vanilla and almond extract. I'm going to put that right in with the egg. So it's a teaspoon of almond extract. And if you're wondering why I'm using a bottle like this, it's because I make my own vanilla by soaking vanilla beans in vodka. <laughs> and three quarter teaspoon of almond extract. So just about enough. So now the butter and sugar mixture looks much better. You can see it's a little bit fluffier, smoother. So I'm just gonna scrape down the bowl and add an egg, the egg and the extracts to it. That incorporate a little bit and you usually have to scrape down the bowl once or twice when you're doing this and those of you that already do a lot of baking certainly know all these little tips I'm giving scrape off the spatula Give it a whirl again. And then I'm going to add the ground almonds and the flour mixture. So I'm going to put the ground almonds in first and slow the beater down. 
So I'm going to add those. And that's two thirds of a cup of ground almonds. And then the flour, um, baking powder, and ground cinnamon. It's two and a half cups of flour, a half a teaspoon of baking powder, a half a teaspoon of cinnamon, and a half a teaspoon of salt. And if you're using salted ground almonds, you can probably eliminate the salt in the recipe. So I'm just gonna give this a little stir together before I add it in. And slowly add in the flour mixture. This produces a pretty thick dough. I'm going to scrape down and get any dry ingredients that might be in the bottom of the bowl and then just beat it until it comes together. It has almost the consistency of a wet pie dough. Um, and we are going to, once this dough is ready, we're going to chill it for about two hours in the refrigerator before we roll it out. Just like you would almost any other cutout cookie. So you can see once it comes together like that on the beater, it's pretty much done. And so then we're just gonna take it out of the bowl and form it into a ball and chill it. Wrap it real well so it doesn't dry out. And then chill it. Okay, so I'm, we're ready to get the dough in the refrigerator. And what I'm gonna do is form it into a ball and then cut it in half and make two, um, sort of flattened balls to refrigerate it. And that just makes rolling it out easier later on. So I'm just gonna make a, a rough ball shape with the dough like this. And then I'm just gonna eyeball it and cut it in half. And take half and put it on some cling wrap or a press and seal, whatever you choose to use. You just wanna wrap it well so that it doesn't dry out. And what I do is put it cut side down and then flatten it a little bit with my palm. And that just makes rolling it out easier when you take it out of the refrigerator. So we just wrap it up and it's ready to go in the refrigerator. Okay, so we have the dough has been refrigerated for two to three hours and then let, taken out of the refrigerator for probably about 30 minutes till it's workable and we're going to roll it out and do our cutouts for the Linzer cookies. Now, I like to put a piece of parchment down on my silicone mat just because the parchment doesn't slide around then and you want to you do want to flour it just like you would with any roll out cookies and take your slightly warm dough and what I like to do is just take the heel of my hand and flatten it a little bit more like this and that sort of gives the dough an extra little warm up before I start with the rolling pin. And you do wanna make sure everything's floured well so that nothing is sticking. And then you're ready to start rolling. roll a little bit and then I turn the dough so it doesn't stick to the parchment. 
maybe add a little more flour if you need to. And if the piece ends up being too big for your piece of parchment, you can always cut the dough in half and just roll out a small piece at a time. You want this dough to be about a quarter inch thick. And that's probably close to that. If you're if you're new to rolling out dough and want aren't sure about how thick to make your dough, you can use a rolling pin like this, which has these guides on the end that come in different thicknesses. And that's really handy for some people. And so what happens is, oh, it was flour, your rolling pin. When you roll it, the guides will, will give you the thickness that, that you're looking for. And so you can see that was about a quarter inch thick. So now we're ready to cut out. Now, to make the Linzer cookies the really traditional way, they're often made at Christmas time and I put like an open star in the middle, but because Valentine's Day is coming up when we're doing this video, we're gonna make hearts on the cookies. So we're gonna start out with circles. And these are coming off the parchment very nicely, so I don't need a spatula. Now, what you want to make sure you do is cut out an even number of tops and bottoms because these are going to be filled cookies. So, we're going to cut out four bottoms and four tops for this demonstration. Put them on the cookie sheet. And then, of these four, we're going to take this little heart-shaped cutout and take the center out of those, and that will end up being the top of the cookie. Now, these little heart-shaped cookies that I'm taking out are perfectly good cookies too, but you do want to bake those on a separate sheet because they will bake much more quickly than the larger cookies. And so I'm just going to set them aside and we'll, we'll bake them later. But um, we can re-roll the scraps then and continue cutting out cookies until we have used up all the dough. So we will put, we are ready to put that cookie sheet in the oven. So we're gonna bake these at a 350 for about 10 minutes. I always set my oven timer for 10 minutes and if they're not done enough, then we will, um, you know, just add a little bit of time. So in they go. So 10 minutes later, the cookies are done. Oh, we certainly do need a hot pad to take these out. Oh, they look perfect. You just want them very slightly golden brown. You don't want them to get too brown or they'll end up just being too hard. So now that they're finished, we're going to allow them to cool and then I will show you how to fill them. Okay, the cookies are ready to be filled now. And traditionally, they are filled with raspberry jam. And what I like to do is use the round cookies, but flip them over and put the jam on the bottom. And just a note of interest is you can certainly use store-bought raspberry jam, but I happen to have some raspberry jam that I made from the raspberries in my garden. So we're just going to spread a nice amount. 
This is really very simple to do. And then take the cutout cookie and place it on the top. And voila, you have a Linzer cookie. When I'm done with these, we are going to sprinkle powdered sugar on the top. Now, another way of doing this is you could put the powdered sugar on just the tops of the cookies first so that it doesn't get inside the heart shaped, but uh, I forgot to get the powdered sugar out, so <laughs> we'll just do it afterward. And we just spread them. I like to go really pretty close to the edge of the cookie because when you put the top on it, you can see a little bit of that red raspberry peeking out from the sides, and I think that looks really pretty. And we'll just do these last two. And, you know, raspberry is the traditional filling, but you could use whatever you like, whatever you want. So I've heard of people using lemon curd, um, you could use chocolate. You could do chocolate and raspberry. That would be really delicious. But if you want really traditional, you would stick with just the raspberry. And if you're not going to eat these right away, I would you could keep them out for a day or so, but I would store them in the refrigerator tightly wrapped if you were gonna keep them longer than that. And there we go. Valentine's Linzer cookies. So I've got the powdered sugar now and you can just sprinkle it on the top like so. And as you can see, it is a little bit nicer if you do the tops before you put them together. But if you were going to serve these, I would put the sugar on just before serving and have some nice Earl Grey tea or a coffee or a cappuccino. And what a lovely tea you would have. And there we go. Thanks for watching. The Linzer cookies are ready to eat. Again, they're a very traditional recipe from Austria. And thank you for watching. If you'd like the details of the recipe or to order any from me, you can reach me at carlenebakes at gmail.com. Thanks again. Thank you.